Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem minimum domino rotations for an equal row. So basically a domino has two sides, the top side and the bottom side. So we're given an array called tops, which represents you know all the values of the top array and another array bottom, which represents all the uh, values of the bottom portion of the dominoes. Each of the values on a domino can be a value between one through six. So this one is a value of two, and the bottom one is also a value of two, but we could have any values between one and six. It could be a one, it could be a six, it could be a four, et cetera, et cetera. We're allowed to rotate any of the dominoes. So we could rotate this one or this one or any of them. And all we really want to know is what would be the minimum number of rotations so that all the values on one of the sides, either the top side or the bottom side, are all the same. If it's not possible, though, then we have to return negative one. So let's take a look at an example. We can see, uh, let's just go through each of these dominoes. So this one has a value of two. This one has a value of five. This one has a value of one. This one has a value of two, two and two. So now the question is, is there a possible way that we can rearrange these dominoes, not rearrange, basically swap some dominoes so that all values on the top or on the bottom are equal? Is it even possible? Well, for that to be possible, every single one of these dominoes has to have one value that's common between all of them. Is that the case right now? It is. This one has a two, this one has a two, and they all have twos, right? Not all the twos are on the same side. You can see that this one has four twos here, here, and here, while the one on the bottom has three twos here, here, and here. So we definitely know that it's possible, but the question is what's the minimum number of rotations in this case? Well, it's not really difficult to come up with how to get that minimum because you know, when you take a look at this domino, of course this one is missing a domino and this one isn't. We know that each of the dominoes has at least a two. Some cases, both of them have a two value, but the only thing we really need to know is uh, how many uh, dominoes on the top side are missing the value of two. In this case, two of them. On the bottom, there's three that are missing right? So how many swaps would we have to do to fill in the top? We'd have to do two swaps. How many swaps would we have to do to fill in the bottom? We'd have to do three swaps. So in this case, we'll take the minimum, which is two, and then perform two swaps and then return that. So pretty straightforward. But how can we algorithmically verify that it's possible to achieve this and then get the minimum number of rotations needed. Well, the good thing for us is that the values are actually limited between one through six. So we could actually have six different for loops or while loops or whatever, and check that. Check uh, for every single domino, does at least one of them have the value one? Check that for each domino. If they don't, we try that. We repeat that for values two through six. We check, does at least one of the dominoes for every single domino have a common value pretty much? So it would still be a linear time solution because six times n is still big O of n time complexity, but we can do slightly better. We can actually get this down to be uh, two times n. And the reason is we can literally just take any arbitrary domino. We could take the first one uh, and just say, okay, the first domino has a top value of two or a bottom value of five. So we know that the only possible values that are common to every single domino are going to be you know, either two or five, because we know for sure that one is not going to be common to all the dominoes because it's not even in the first domino. So it's not going to work. Same for three, same for four, same for six. None of those are going to work. You know, in this case, we took the first domino, but we could pick any domino. We could take the second domino and see, oh, well, both of them have two. So the only possible a value that's going to work is two. So then we check uh, every single domino with the two value. Uh, but in the generic case, they'll have two different values. So then instead of having six loops, we'll have two for loops, checking if two or five are common to every single domino. And at the same time, we'll be keeping track of how many uh, missing values are on the top row and how many missing are on the bottom row. And if we do find that it's possible to do the rotations, we'll have to return what the minimum number of rotations is. So still overall, a big, N, big O of n time solution, no extra memory needed though. So now let's code it up. Okay, since we know we have at least one domino, I'm just gonna take two variables, target one and target two, and just you know take, let's say the first domino, the top value of it, and the bottom value of the first domino and just say, you know, these are our two target values. We're gonna go through two loops and check are one of these values in every single domino. We'll go through top, bottom, in, 
Uh, we can iterate through two arrays at the same time in Python by zipping them. So top and bottom zip together, we'll be iterating through a value from each of those. I know the naming might be a little confusing since there's just an S missing from each of these. But so this is our first loop where we're gonna check, okay, is either the top value equal to the target, or in this case, target one, or is the bottom value equal to the target? Well, in that case, we would wanna continue. But if that's actually not the case where we can check pretty easily just by putting this whole thing in a parenthesis, if this is not the case, then we're going to break this loop and just exit. Otherwise, uh, we want to keep track of how many are missing and how many are mi uh, missing on the top and on the bottom. So I'm gonna create two more variables, miss T and miss B for uh, missing bottom and top. Maybe I should just add the three characters to make this a little bit more clear. So now we can actually increment the missing uh, accounts for the top and the bottom. So if top is not equal to the target, then we can say missing top is gonna be incremented by one and do the exact same thing with the bottom. So if the bottom is not equal to the target, then uh, missing bottom is also gonna be incremented by one. And at the end, we're gonna return the minimum of these two. But how do we know if every single domino contained that or not? Well, the easiest way here would be to check the index. So if we did have the index, i is equal to length of uh, tops or bottom because the length of these our arrays are gonna be both the same, but basically if I has reached the last index, then we can return. And what we're gonna return is gonna be the minimum of missing top and missing bottom. But it turns out we didn't have the index when we wrote this loop, but we can do that pretty easily just by wrapping this in another function called enumerate, uh, which will just basically allow us to get the value and the index at the same time as we iterate through it. So on the top, just have one more variable i for the index. So now this is pretty much good to go. Now, obviously if this didn't work uh, on the outside, we'd have to try it the second way, right? With the second uh, target value over here. But we can actually just maybe, uh, instead of copy and pasting this, we can reuse this code by uh, maybe saying target in uh, this array t1 and t2. These are the two target values we're gonna try. Of course, if we had to do it the other way where we uh, were gonna you know, literally iterate through all through values between one through six, we could replace this array with an array of one, two, three, four, five, six. But this array is a little bit smaller, so let's use that. And actually, let's just not even create variables t1 and t2. Let's get rid of that as well. And let's replace all the uh, calls to t1 uh, the references with target. Oh, and actually I noticed I had a T2 here. That was unintentional, by the way. We were supposed to have T1 here, not T2. Okay, and that's pretty much the entire code. So and actually, I think if we enumerate this, it doesn't return three values. So instead of getting both of the values, like when we zipped it, we're going to get the pair. And then we can just extract that pair of values into the top and bottom variables. Because while this does return, you know, an index and a pair, that pair is nested inside of this pair that's returned as well. So we can't extract those in the same line, I think. But, okay, so that's pretty much the entire logic. Now, of course, if neither of these two targets works, then on the outside, we want to return negative one. And as you can see on the left, yes, it works and it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.